I feel Iceland has always inspired me and always will. And I feel blessed that I was born here in a place where the industrial revolution didn't really happen. And I am living in a capital of Europe that has all the best of technological advance, but also we surround it with nature. So for me, I'm never, I could never imagine it in any other way. I feel I will probably all my lifetime, and even though I lived five lifetimes more, I couldn't, uh, I could, I would, that would still inspire me continuously and try to bridge the gap between the two. I definitely feel that women in Iceland are uh, very strong. They could be stronger, of course. We could get more equal uh, treatment, but I think actually looking at the map of the world and all the different statistics, uh, women actually have most um, power here in Iceland compared to the whole world. And uh, I guess I was kind of really spoiled with that as a, when I was growing up and it wasn't until I started traveling abroad when I, people started telling me and, and I started seeing that, <laughs> that women, you know, you know, that women weren't equal to, to men. Iceland has never really had much immigrants, like we have for a thousand years of pretty much uh, isolation. Uh, we are kind of learning clumsily now how to deal with that. Um, we're really late in the game. Uh, we are having our issues and, and there's been a lot of protests and uh, we don't even have the bureaucracy or the infrastructure of how to deal with refugees we've had from Syria. I have, I'm very hopeful that it, 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 we will though, and it's going to change. And, and I would like to say that um, eventually we would welcome, we would welcome anyone. <laughs> Something that I've been really obsessed with is two ladies. I believe there's a big exhibition now in Mexico City, which I intend to see. One Spanish lady, Remo Diosvaros, and an English lady, Leonora Carrington. Um, they both managed to flourish and take surrealism to the next level in Mexico City. And I would like to believe that that was a very welcoming country to them. I, yeah, maybe that's kind of what uh, comes to the top of my head. I obviously have watched a lot of Mexican films and, uh, and have some friends uh, who are in the film, film world. And yes, I have to say I love Mexican films. So, and, but I'm, to be honest, I'm still getting to know Mexico in a lot of ways. I actually haven't been there a lot and I can't wait to come to support and be introduced to more. I, if, I, if there was five of me, I couldn't do them all. So overall, as much as I'm flattered when I get, when I get offered film roles, um, I, I think I just need to focus on doing music well. Oh, there's a lot of films that changed my life. I, I love films. Um, just on the top of my head, I'm probably forgetting a lot of them. I love Peter Strickland. I love Lucretia Martel. I love uh, The Lobster, that film, by the Greek uh, director Yorkos Latimos. I love uh, 
Andrei Tarkovsky, Solaris, one of my favorite films, and Louis Bunuel. All his films are incredible. Um, yeah, I could go on forever. I always have a lot of playlists going on. I listen to classical music, I listen to, I guess it would be called alternative electronic music. I listen to pretty abstracted noises. I, I like sound effect albums. I like world music. I like R&B, I like pop. I like um, every type of music and I really like the cornucopia of uh, listening to all of it in the same day and and that sort of celebration of how many ways human, humans have managed to find a way to express themselves. I find it really positive and very life affirming and uh, yes, so yes, I have a lot of playlists always playing around and I'm surrounded by music pretty much most of the time. Thank you very much.